aconteceu. And we're back here at the GSL Codex. So, uh, today has been pretty interesting so far. Yeah, a pretty so big upset in the first series. Uh, two really good games that uh, ended up going late game. So, yeah. Fun. Um, yeah, it rain losing, in fact, too. Now, Life, I'm a little bit more confident here than I was with Rain. Life's been playing very well. I just saw him play brilliantly at DreamHack uh, Bucharest. Yeah. Life's a very scary player. This guy's still very, very young. I think he's got a big future ahead of him. Uh, he's already made a big footprint here in StarCraft 2 already. Um, oh, look at his WCS ranking. He's in fifth, fifth. place. Yeah. He's beat Classic uh, to get here and get up his group in first place. Classic also advancing, of course. This guy tactically easily the best Zerg on the planet. Yeah, for sure. I mean, his harass is just... Like none other. And his preparation for groups is really good. That's part of his success, I'd say. That's why we don't see him come out as often in Pro League. And he doesn't really play um, as well in best of ones. In the group stage, he seems to be very, very uh, calculated on how he prepares. Now, Paralyze is somebody who hasn't really impressed as much. But being in the round yeah. of 16 of the GSL Code S is pretty damn impressive. He beat DR, or, uh, he lost to DRG, but he did beat Myungshik and then beat DRG a second time to actually get out of his group. So no easy feat going into the round 16 here. You know, um, it's funny that we do end up talking like this because, yeah, round of 16 GSL Code S is the legend god status. But yeah. at the same time, you got to compare him to the rest of the players in the group. And there are 31 other people just like him in the 30, round of 32, and now there's 15 yeah. other people just like him. And where does he stack up to the other gods in the group? <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, if these are like the Greek gods, I mean, he's not, he might not be Zeus, you know? Yeah. He might be, uh, I don't know, like the god of like tea or something. He's you know, like the like messenger god, god or something. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, it Paralyze is very, very good, but I, I really am having a hard time imagining Paralyze on an open map here, trying to move out and not getting wrecked by life. Like, life is so good at harass. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see, uh,. I mean, I think life is highly favored here, but honestly, I thought the same of Rain. Nobody in the group has taken Paralyzed seriously, so he's going to make a name for himself here. And it's time for our second best of three. Get out there, tell your friends, tune in here for today's epic group. This is life up against Paralyzed here at Golem EXP. In the bottom right here, in the red, he is... Storytale Life, Yi Sing Young. The fan favorite it well, as well, it seems to be, based on uh, our crowd here. And his opponent here in the upper left, in the blue. SK Telecom T1 Paralyzed, Jung Kyung Doo. He is. Used to be known as the Afro Toss. I guess he's still known as it, but he doesn't have an Afro anymore. But uh, I actually I forgot I about that. Yeah, I forgot about the Afro. We've got some life support here in the uh, life support. Uh, uh, we have some uh, support for life here uh, in the audience. Yeah. And uh, looks like it is going to be another forge opening. And life actually plays a bit greedier. Does not. Uh, he, well, actually, in some ways he does. He doesn't drone scout, but he still goes pool first, so saves some extra yeah, money. Yeah, I, I don't think you need a drone scout as much on this map just because it's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's a big map, too. So, I, I, you know, I, for now, the probe is going to come out here. It looks like there's the, the possibility that he might try to cannon rush. High on, high life. on. Oh, that's clever. Oh, I didn't get it. I was like, high on. I, 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 seriously, if you were not here, Wolf, I wouldn't have got it, man. That's a... That is a, That's a very great sign. funny sign right there. Yeah, man. Very punny indeed. That's the kind of jokes I like. <laughs> so we're going to have the Nexus now. There's not going to be any cannon rush. Four lings are about to hatch. You know, I kind of like the approach of like the pool first without drone scout on a two-player map. Because it's like save, 
So you get a lot of extra money still, even though your hatch is late. Like, you're not losing that extra drone money. Yeah. I really like that. I think it's a great move. Uh, this is pretty much the way to play, especially on maps like this, if you're Zerg. Uh, you still get your expansion out and be safe. So it looks like uh, just some stats on here. Last time uh, they met in Code A, um, Life won both games to, to go to Code S. Oh, okay, now we have the translation of that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it was a waste of my it's time. It's a waste to try of to the do Korean that. you learned, Wolf. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. I guess I should learn Portuguese. Like, Guys, <laughs> listen, I want you to know Wolf was lying. It's just written down. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have the hatch, bottom center, being taken now. And, um, yeah, this. Uh, is he should block that, right? No. Oh, well, it probably had, like, no health, I guess. Yeah, I thought he was going to uh, throw a pylon up there. So one link comes in here. Now, one link, nowhere near as bad as two. It's much harder to kill off workers. Yeah, and, and much less bad than six. But, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> which is even, even less bad than 12. certainly much more okay, yeah, than 24 <laughs> links. Um, but uh, it's, it's still annoying. He's actually going to have to micromanage this the entire time. Life will as well, but as the Zerg in this case, because the, the link much, is faster, it's much easier. Yeah, just much, much easier. So, uh, Paralyze is spotted the third base. The Cybernetics score is about halfway done. When that's finished up here, we're going to see what exact tech route is going to be. Pretty common nowadays oh. for... Oh! Last second pull there. Looks like he wants to send some of these probes down here. He's actually, like, very actively chasing that probe. He's got a vendetta. Probe killed his father. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's going to be the beginning of the end here for the Ling Harass. Well, so, uh, so, I mean, this Ling is, is going to actually see the Stargate, so that's pretty nice. I mean, it's not like it's Paralyze's fault they didn't kill the Ling, it's just letting the Ling in that's the problem. Yeah, that's the mistake there. Once the Ling's in, I mean, it's funny because even this Probe Prince is chasing this Ling, this is minerals that are lost in the long run. Yeah. Every second of probe mines is about one mineral loss. Well, all right. Well, uh, in case you didn't know who wins move. between a queen and a zealot, now you do. Um, so the Stargate's almost done here. I think we're gonna probably have an Oracle opening. These are become yeah, pretty popular map. nowadays. Probably so. It's really easy to get that Oracle over to the second pretty quickly and try to take out some drones. No, excuse me. He's gonna go for Phoenixes. Phoenix is also a totally fine choice to go for. Yeah, I think if you show the Oracle to the Ling. It's like, oh, okay, he's going to take a third base, and you kind of know the next two steps, too. But when you yeah, see you a Phoenix, you can mass not, up lings. Yeah, when you see a Phoenix, you're not really sure, though. You're like, well, he could take a fast third still. He could do four gateway pressure afterwards. With the Oracle, yeah. it's much more clear. I really like what you're time. saying there, Wolf. There's a lot more ambiguity with build orders. If you see the Phoenixes coming, it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, it is tricky, though, if you're going to get those Phoenixes out, unless he just makes one and goes into Void Ray to hold the third base if he decides to take that. So that's something else to keep in mind, too. Oh, wow, Zerg he shows the oh, Robo here. That hurts. Yeah. Because now it's like, I think if I'm life, I'm like, okay, you're probably going to do some sort of warp prism stuff here, most likely. Because you don't really need that robe necessarily to take a third base. And here come those gates. I think he is going to make a warp prism. Yeah, I think this is going to look very similar to the build that we saw Rain do yeah. um, on Ultra Zeme Stronghold. Well, this is uh, definitely something that life can handle. We'll see how he decides to respond. He's going one Evo chamber here. So most likely going to be going down the Roach path. Playing a very different style so far than what we saw from um, our previous series with uh, Solar. And uh, she goes for the robotics bay, in fact, quickly. So he just wants to take yeah. a very fast, uh, sa or very safe third, not as fast. Yeah, I'll get some Colossi out here. Try to do some harass. He only has uh, two Phoenixes put together here. He's going to have a total of four in a second. He, by the way, he stopped making Phoenixes after those four. Four is a pretty good number to just continue to float around the map and do a uh, harass here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, and with four phoenixes, you can kill a queen with one lift, so that's uh, another yeah. reason why. I'm going to try to see if any of these overlords get uh, pushed out in the middle. Not going to be the case. And here comes that lift I was talking about. Should be able to invoke this as it kill it with just one lift. Yeah, and it goes down. Uh, and from here, you can park right over the gas. This is going to keep Zerg occupied. Now, life does have the right uh, answer to this. Uh, when you see the phoenixes like this, you do want to expand again. Yeah. They can't lift they, up the hatch. They can't, they can't pick up that hatch. Uh, he's actually making hydras. That's going to be Legacy of the Void Man when they get that upgrade. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just uprooting buildings. Well, you know, the, uh, the thing about this is it, with the hydras popping out one by one like this, he has to be careful. He needs to keep those together. Yeah. So phoenixes can actually pick off one or two of those by themselves. It's like... 
Is this scouting overkill? He <laughs> sends a fake Phoenix in here too. <laughs> I think he's trying to be very careful about the other expansions that have come up here. Like when he wants to know when exactly are the other bases being taken. Is he going to take a fifth or not? Because there's a very tight timing here. Let's say he takes a fifth base. There, he might want to, um, as paralyzed, he might want to push out a little bit quicker then, you know? Yeah. Try to shut that down. Now, the Hydras and the Lings are coming up here to the uh, other hatchery, and this is a problem because there is there is a Colossus, yes, there are sentries, yes, but this is a lot of Hydras and a lot of Lings. I mean, it's a it's a pretty tough situation to fight now that he's kind of caught in his base here because this allows the Hydras some zoning. I love that he uses the overcharge at the third base, and yeah. that means it's hard for the Hydras to kind of kite back here. And he's going to actually deal with this quite handedly. This is... Pretty solid defense here. This hurts for life a lot. Pretty expensive to lose all these units. Now, the only reason why this was pushed back so hard was because Paralyze rushed the Colossi out first before he took the third base. Uh, and I'm not sure if Life was aware of that. So I think he maybe was expecting that he got gets there, there's no Colossi, and he can do a lot more with uh, just a small number of pipes. He went over with nine. So Also, the force fields are really good there. True. From Paralyze to trap the Zealots. Going over here, just harassing a little bit more with these Phoenixes. Taking oh. off an Ovi. An Ovi? I haven't heard him called Ovi's in a while. Well, as long as nobody says calls Marines Ryan's, that's why. That's oh what, man, that's when I make Marines or Ryan's. I remember people would say Ryan's. I'm like, no, 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 that's no, it's Marines. So it's that's why it's Marines. It's not Ryan's. I'm like, Ryan is like. I know, just, I lose, I lose my mind. But that's stuff. normally when people are chatting on Battle.net. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, some people say it's like when people call them mutas instead of mutt mutts. Yeah, that's they're supposed to. You're supposed to, they're, that's they're weird. called mutt mutts, you know, like yeah, mutas just sounds weird, right? I, I, that that's what grinds my gears. Yeah, man. or when uh, a famous commentator says Templars instead of Templar, like <laughs> gets on my nerves, man. All right, here we go. He's actually got. He's actually just gonna try to brute force his way in here with corruptors. I don't think this is gonna work. Actually, it's just too much anti air. Yeah, I think uh, Protoss is actually in such a good spot here. Yeah, he's like totally he's safe. He's very safe. He's he's really airtight. I mean, and not uh, over making defense or anything like that. Actually looking really good. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the Corruptor idea here is just, okay, maybe I can catch a Colossus coming out of the Robo, but there's no Colossus being produced right now, and the ones that are out are totally safe, and he could try to pick off Phoenixes, so his mutalists are a little bit better on, later on, but... Yeah. He doesn't even... I think, I think he only made, like, five mutas or something? Like... Uh, I think you might be right. He's we just see, got a few. We see about four that were up there, and maybe one more. So I think he's the faking them out here. He's, like, trying to make him think, oh, you're going mutas, I need to start a ton of Phoenixes. Then he's going to go into a big Roach Hydra push. Yeah, I think you, I think you nailed it, Wolf. Um, and it's a fake out that here. That timing could be uh, very strong. By the way, uh, when these eight Hydras hatch, that attack is going to start. Uh, and you can see he's moving his army up there now. And this actually is really smart by life. This is a pretty brainy move here. Now, uh, he does see that there are Hydras and Roaches still popping out. So Yeah, I don't think um, he's falling for it because he has this OBS here. And he also sees the Hive, so he's like, oh, you're just going to go into Vipers and you're going to try to get some ducks on my Colossi. Uh, I'm not going to make Phoenixes here. He needs to move back against these Hydras. And here come those two Colossi. This is not an engagement. Life can win. All right, so life has to back off again here. Now, life... Uh really ramped it up to try to get this timing attack out here and so far Paralyze is just playing beautifully. He's been able to defend every single attack here that's come from life. Now defending isn't the only thing that he needs to do. He has to eventually get an offensive up here, push across the map and sort of take life out. Life right now in four bases to Paralyze is three. Yeah, well, uh, you know, two Vipers only coming out here. Uh, that can actually be a, a game changer, though. He gets a good abducts. Solid defense here with the warp on the stalkers. It's going to push these roaches back. He's also going to clean up these roaches over here that are trying to kill the rocks. So I think he's pretty poised to take a fourth base relatively soon because he's got the army to beat what life has right now without the vipers. Love the spine crawlers back there to defend from a warp prison morass. Yeah, because that's coming up pretty soon, as you guys can see on the production tab. Um. Well, this is a big attack coming up here for Paralyze. Let's see if he's got enough to take this on. I believe only two sentries in that army here. Lots of st uh, Stalkers, good amount of Colossi. These Vipers are quintessential to this army. He absolutely has to get good of dogs. That's the only way he's going to win this fight. Because there's so many stalkers plus the board race to deal with the corruptors. That's not the answer here. It's got to be the abducts. Now the other problem though is that life has been on four bases for a while now. Um, oh, 
He actually pulled some other support behind uh, the actual battle. And the funny thing is the time warps actually still happen though. <laughs> he doesn't kill it. So doesn't end up helping him too much here. And this army of life is going to get wrecked. It's going to get destroyed by this side. I think force. he's actually going to be able to push into the fourth and take them out. I mean, you know, life tried to pull a few tricks out of his hat here, but in the end, it was just the, the steady, solid play of Paralyzed that that's going to win him. Yeah, That one observer in the main base is like all he needed to know that this was totally a yep. trick. GG. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, just one unit like that observer is enough to give away all the other information. He had, he had something where he could see uh, what the uh, Zerg was making. I don't think Life even now has any idea that observer was ever there in his base. Yeah, he's probably just like, wow, did you played badly, you should have reacted my Mutalist, you know? Yeah. Well, now the map uh, goes to life to choose. What do you think he's going to pick, Wolf? Overgrowth. Overgrowth, yeah, probably. 100%. Like, it's like, I think like only once life is picked, or actually the only player I think that I can think of who ever picked not Overgrowth was life, and he picked Frost. So maybe he picks Frost instead, and he seems to like that map. Uh, he and Moonglade seem to like that for this matchup. We'll see what he does, though. Habitation Station. Not All right. What I expected. Ooh, what are we gonna have here? Could this be something funky. Will life lift off the hatchery and go to the gold base? Anything could happen on this map. Yeah, and expect anything. <laughs> well, Paralyzed just one went away here from pulling off our you second. You know, we've seen a lot of Protosses do very well at this map with the. Uh, Forge expand into taking the gold into the immortal push. Yeah, like parting has done several times. Yeah. But definitely something we could see here. Well, life clearly has a plan because of all the maps he could have picked, he picked this one. Yeah. And I'm thinking maybe he does like or even like a fast expand of the gold or a roach push, or maybe yeah. he like is trying to bait that fast gold from the Protoss because he's really good at defending it. Anything is possible here. Yeah, yeah a lot of mind games going on. Time to go into game number two now. Between life and paralyzed, the winner of this best of three goes on to the winner's match against Solar.